Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace and love of God our Father and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, to prepare our hearts to enter into the sacred mysteries as we celebrate this memorial of St. Joseph the Worker, let us together call to mind our sins and seek God's merciful love. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, creator of all things, who laid down for the human race the law of work, graciously grant that by the example of St. Joseph and under his patronage, we may complete the works you set us to do and attain the rewards you promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. from the Acts of the Apostles. The apostles and the brothers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles too had accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers confronted him, saying, You entered the house of uncircumcised people and ate with them. Peter began and explained it to them step by step, saying, I was at prayer in the city of Joppa, when in a trance I had a vision, something resembling a large sheet coming down lowered from the sky by its four corners, and it came to me looking intently into it. I observed and saw the four-legged animals of the earth, the wild beasts, the reptiles, and the birds of the sky. I also heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter, slaughter and eat. But I said, Certainly not, sir, because nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time a voice from heaven answered, what God has made clean, you are not to call profane. This happened three times, and then everything was drawn up again into the sky. Just then, three men appeared at the house where we were, who had been sent to me from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to accompany them without discriminating. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He related to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house, saying, Send someone to Joppa and summon Simon, who is called Peter, who will speak words to you, by which you and your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remember the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift he gave to us, when he came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to be able to hinder God? When they heard this, they stopped objecting and glorified God, saying, God has then granted life-giving repentance to the Gentiles too. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The thirst is my soul for the living God. The is my soul for the living God. As the hind longs for running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. Then will I go into the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep is not, are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know mine and I know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and the power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's reading from the Acts of the Apostles, my dear brothers and sisters, we get a glimpse into the process of resolving issues in the early days of the church. And then in the gospel from John, we just heard Jesus identifies himself truly as the good shepherd. He is the good shepherd and we are his sheep. He died once for all, laying down his life for you and me, his chosen flock, so that we may have this precious gift of eternal life. It's up to us to follow his word so we may share eternity with him. And truly a good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And in today's liturgy, we do have two shepherds. The first whom we always honor, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But the second whose memorial we celebrate St. Joseph, the worker. St. Joseph, in his life and his ministry, clearly demonstrates a willingness to cooperate and work with God's plan. In sacred scripture, there is no words attributed to St. Joseph, a very wise man. To say the least, there's no words spoken of St. Joseph. But ultimately, he was also another wise man because he listened to the voice of the angel as it appeared to him in a dream. How many of us would listen to a dream? We might struggle with discerning it, but his discernment, it was so real, so powerful that he listened. And his work and his mission, in addition to what he did as a carpenter, his work in mission was also to protect the Holy Family our Blessed Mother, and our Lord Jesus Christ. And he fulfilled that so beautifully in his life. And yes, he labored as a carpenter. But why did he work? He worked to provide for the need of his flock to provide for the Blessed Mother, to provide for our Lord Jesus Christ. Why do we work? Do we work for a paycheck? Or do we work to provide 
you know, even if we don't necessarily have a family of our own to provide for, every single Christian, my dear brothers and sisters, has a responsibility to provide for those in need, for those who cannot provide for themselves. There are some who are unable to provide for themselves for whatever reason, whatever disability and cross that has been placed upon them that prevents them. We have an obligation and a duty to provide for them. Why do we work? And it's important, my dear brothers and sisters, that we reclaim the dignity of work, especially in today's society. I think in so many ways, people work for the paycheck or what I think is becoming more alarming is that people choose not to work and get something for nothing. People lack pride in their work. You know, we have a responsibility to teach the importance of work and why we work. We have a responsibility to share with our young people the importance of taking pride in what they do. That pride, sadly, is lacking in so many ways. Sadly, today, we have to teach people, you know, one of my big complaints today is we have to teach pe young people how to earn. I mean, sadly, if I was starting off as a teenager, I could apply right down here at Sheets and get paid more money in salary than I'm getting paid as a pastor. It's true. Sadly, it's true. St. Joseph worked. Our parents worked. They worked because they understood. I mean, not, sometimes we're lucky to enjoy our jobs, sometimes we're not. But why do we work? To provide. And when we work hard and we earn something, we can have, we can be proud of that accomplishment. We need to be humble. We need to work hard. And we need to trust God, just like St. Joseph. That is our work and our mission. St. Joseph's mission was to provide and to protect and that is our mission, my dear brothers and sisters, to provide and protect for our families and those most in need. We are to be the good shepherds in the world. We are called to lay down our lives for one another, following the example of the good shepherd provided to us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so today, may we seek the intercession of St. Joseph, the humble laborer, the hard worker, and asking him to intercede on our behalf, in particular for the intercession to be protected from all harm and for the strength to provide for the needs of our church, the needs of our family, the needs of those unable to provide for themselves.
As we gather with confidence in the Father's love, let us offer him our petitions. For the church in her role of shepherd, may the Holy Spirit continue to fill her with every grace and blessing. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations and peoples, may the Lord bring them leaders who will honor the right of religious freedom for all those they govern. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from anxiety or mental anguish, may they experience the peace of Jesus, we pray. For all in this community who need healing or reconciliation, may the mercy and forgiveness of Jesus be theirs, we pray. For all who have died in the company of the Good Shepherd, May they enjoy eternal life with him in heaven, we pray. For the intention of the holy sacrifice of the Mass, being offered this morning for Maria Knoll, we pray. Lord God, we humbly pray that you grant our petitions. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands and the grace of your hands and the for our good and good of this holy church. O God, fount of all mercy, look upon our offerings which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of St. Joseph and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become the means of protection for those who call upon you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and on the commemoration of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse of the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you, Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim, worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you hold us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs for eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep my soul safe to my life. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to assure you, even though I recognize that I can go down the road and get paid more money, the benefit package of being a priest is just out of this world. And I'm not talking about health care, I'm not talking about salary. I'm talking about the grace that flows from it. And so, you know, you know the, the, the idea of just you know, learning from St. Joseph to follow his example, to work hard, to persevere, that's the most important thing, and that's what we need to pass on to our young people today. The dignity of work, why we work. We work to provide for ourselves and others. We don't work for the paycheck. We work to build up our society and our world. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do that, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Proceed. Proceed.